Hello everybody, I'm Professor Zara Newby, Head of the Department of Classics and Ancient History at the University of Warwick and I'm delighted to welcome you to this presentation which is going to take you through a few of our degrees um, and tell you a little bit about Warwick and classics in general. Um, do please come and join us at some of our open days. We've got two open days coming up in October on the 10th and the 24th and those will give you the opportunity to meet more of my colleagues and uh, some of our students and to ask any questions you've got as well. So um, there's an excellent opportunity to get to know us but because we're aware that some of you might be applying for the earlier UCAS deadline uh, and that's quite close to the open days we thought this would be useful to give you an idea of the department and the degrees we offer beforehand. Um, we've also put some taster lectures online and we're having a Q&A session on the 23rd of uh, September, so do come and join us there and ask any questions you've got. So what I'd like to do in this short presentation is to take you through the degrees we offer and our entry requirements, um, talk a little bit about why we think classics and ancient history is such an excellent area to study and why it's still relevant uh, in our modern day um, and why you might want to come and join us at Warwick to do that. In terms of degree programmes, um, we have four main degree programmes. Um, two of which require an A-level in either Latin or Ancient Greek, and the other two which do not require um, specific A-levels, although people often do come in with perhaps an A-level in classical civilization or Latin or Ancient History. So the degree programmes which require A-level Latin or Ancient Greek are the BA Classics degree, Q800, and the BA Classics in English degree, QQ36. Uh, the classics degree is focused especially on Greek and Latin language and literature. So that means that for half of your degree, you'll be focused on the languages and texts in the original. Um, but the other half of your degree is very flexible so that in your second and third year, for example, if you wish to, you could choose an option from outside the department um, or you could choose to study one of our history or archeology span modules, um, as well as uh, your ancient texts. So there's quite a lot of flexibility and I think that's one of the things that makes us distinctive at Warwick uh, as opposed to some other classics courses. Um, you're required to come in with either A-level Latin or Greek. Uh, sometimes people come in with both, sometimes people just have one or the other. If you've got, say, Latin but not any Greek uh, or Greek to GCSE, then you pick up Greek at the required level when you begin. So you can start Greek um, from, from scratch when you join us. Uh, for the Classics and English degree, you will study 50% of your degree in the Classics department and 50% in the English department all the way through. Uh, so in your first year, for example, you would take Latin if you've come in with A-level Latin um, and our Roman Culture and Society module and then two modules from the English department. Um, and you continue with your classical language in your second year as well. Um, so you, you generally take a kind of a Greek or a Latin pathway through that degree. Um, we also have study in Europe options for all of our degrees, um, apart from classics and English. Uh, and so we have a classics Greek or classics Latin with study in Europe degree, where, for example, you take either Italian or German in your um, first and second years, and then you spend your third year out in Europe um, at one of our partner universities, and then come back to work for your fourth year. Um, the other two main degrees that we offer are Ancient History and Classical Archaeology and Classical Civilization. Um, and both of these also have a study in Europe version, which makes them into a four year degree. Um, and there's also study abroad uh, variants of all of our degrees as well. Um, the difference between study in Europe degrees and study abroad degrees uh, are two really. One is about the curriculum. For, so for study in Europe degrees, you will study in one language. Uh, alongside your classics modules in both first and second year. Um, that's generally Italian or German because those are the uh, institutions we have partnerships with, but it's possible that will change in the future as we're developing new partnerships and finding new ways of working um, um, after we leave the EU. Uh, the study abroad variant, you don't actually apply for at this stage through UCAS, but once you're at Warwick, you can opt to take your third year um, abroad at one of our partner universities where they teach in English. So that's particularly Monash in Australia, um, Utrecht in the Netherlands. Uh, and that allows you to, to go and have a, a year out exploring um, how the subject is taught in another country. 
so the difference between ancient history and classical archaeology and classical civilization is really one of emphasis. So they share a number of core modules in the first year. For both degrees, you would be studying uh, introduction to Greek culture and society and introduction to Roman culture and society. And you'll also take an ancient language for both of them, uh, either Latin or Greek. Um, but with ancient history and classical archaeology, you would also have as a core module introduction to Greek and Roman history. And then for classical civilization, you can either choose to do uh, the introduction to Greek and Roman history module, or you can choose modules from the philosophy department in um, approaches to philosophy and uh, ancient philosophy. So classical civilization is um, generally slightly more focused on the, the kind of the literature side uh, and the, the culture side of things. So for your second and third year modules, you have to take at least one option from our list B, which is uh, mostly literature and languages, whereas ancient history and classical archaeology is more focused on the history and um, material culture side of things. So you would take two modules in years two and three um, from our history and archaeology list, and I'll show you those in a little while. Uh, both of these have study in Europe, are variants, as I mentioned, are the study abroad option. So what are we looking for? Um, really, we're looking for candidates who are passionate about the ancient world, who have a good academic record, um, and are really interested in exploring this further. So as I've said, for some of the module, for some of the degrees, classics and classics in English, we do need uh, an A-level in either Latin or Greek, but for the other module, for the other subjects, degrees, we don't have any required subjects. People often come in with maybe classical civilization or English or history, uh, but we also have people who come in with three sciences but have always been passionate about um, studying, say, ancient history or archaeology. So there's a, there's a whole range of people who come in, uh, a whole range of backgrounds, and what we do when you get here is give you a thorough grounding in all aspects of the ancient world through our core modules. So if you haven't had the opportunity to study any kind of classical subject formally before, then don't worry, there will be a kind of a, a thorough uh, grounding for you when you get here. So our normal offer is AAB or IB36. Um, we do also make contextual offers for those from working participation backgrounds. Um, and obviously we have kind of equivalent offers if you're coming in from uh, abroad with foreign qualifications uh, or through a different route. Uh, we also have part-time um, uh, degrees off as well, which have different qualification um, requirements. Uh, we don't genuinely interview, we look at your personal statement in particular, we look at your academic record and then once we've made you an offer we would off invite you to an offer holder open day um, and that's where we can get to know you uh, much more uh, in person. So why study classics in ancient history? Um, for me what makes this such a brilliant area to study is the fact that it combines so many different disciplines into one. So you're not just studying literature, as you might be on an English degree, you're not just studying history, you're not just studying history of art or material culture, but you have the opportunity to look at how all of those intersect within one particular cultural um, framework of the ancient world. So that really allows you to explore different interests, but also to follow your interests and to develop your own strengths. And it means that when you come in, you may have only explored, for example, one aspect of the ancient world. But when you get here, you're suddenly opened up to the whole plethora of things that you can do. So it, it gives you lots and lots of flexibility, but also coherence because you're studying all of these within the kind of framework of the ancient Mediterranean. Um, we also think that it's, it's useful um, uh, grounding really to kind of modern culture because so much of our uh, contemporary culture has its roots in thoughts and ideas that originated in the ancient world. Um, so that allows us to kind of interrogate that, to think about the ways in which democracy, for example, as a concept has been kind of picked up and, and repackaged and made, made different things um, in the modern world. Uh, and it also allows us to explore some of the challenges that we're approaching in the, ancient, in the modern world, but through an ancient lens. So things like identity politics, migration, globalization, all of these were aspects of the ancient world too, if you think about the Roman Empire and sort of it's the, the way in which provincial cultures interacted with the centre. Um, these are things that we can kind of look at again through exploring them in the historical perspective. And we're also very open to thinking about new ways of um, 
it's sort of defining the curriculum, so decolonizing the, the classics curriculum, thinking about, well, why are these particular texts seen as canonical and other, other texts that actually have been overlooked? Um, and that we should look at other aspects of the ancient world as well and give them more of a say in our thinking about what uh, ancient Greece and Rome were. Um, and this breadth of subject is uh, an ideal preparation for a whole range of different careers. So because you will study a range of different sorts of techniques, you will have language learning, you'll have detailed analysis of primary sources, you'll have to um, do problem solving and thinking about kind of a question and bringing the evidence to bear on it and testing out your hypotheses, then it gives you a whole range of different skills, um, things like flexibility and eye for detail, problem solving skills that you can then take with you into whatever you want to go and do next. Um, why Warwick in particular? Um, we're very pleased to have been rated as seventh amongst the UK classics departments in the most recent Guardian Guide. Um, we have an excellent rapport with our students um, and we really get on well with them. Um, we pride ourselves on being a close-knit, welcoming community. So we have lots of opportunity for uh, interaction between staff and students. We have a very good staff-student ratio. Um, and we give face-to-face -face feedback on all your assessed work. So although we will obviously give uh, written feedback as well, you'll have a kind of uh, a session in one-to-one um, -one where we will go through your essays and talk to you about what was good, what you might want to develop further and really help you kind of progress as, as an individual. Um, as I've mentioned before, we believe that language is really important. You understand the ancient world through um, using the words that they use themselves by thinking about how which words are used in which texts so all of our degrees involve some study of the ancient languages either latin or greek in the first year obviously the classics degree you then continue that all the way through but for classical civilization as well if you find that you've never had the opportunity to do languages before and you love latin then you can continue with it or pick up greek um, so we're really keen to give everyone that opportunity because of the fact it's just not so widely available anymore in the um, educational system lots and lots of different sorts of modules um, so lots of variety and lots of flexibility uh, although our first year is rather more set to give you a kind of common um, grounding so that you, you know of all the different areas you might choose to go into, once you get into second and third year there are lots of different modules that you can choose from, I'm going to show you a list in a moment, um, and that allows you to uh, learn from people who are actively researching on these things, so we're really inspired by them because we're thinking through these problems for ourselves as well, um, but also to follow your interests. And it does mean that if you come in thinking you're a kind of text person, but you actually discover you really like archaeology, that you have the flexibility to do both of those things as well. Um, we pride ourselves on our teaching styles, on being um, very innovative in the ways we teach and thinking about performance as a way to learn about things. So, for example, we have a seminar which is a reenactment of Greek symposium with replica vases. Uh, we do lots of learning outside the classroom, things like museum visits. Um, we put on practical workshops. We've done things like uh, mummy painting and mosaic making in the past. Um, and we also have lots of opportunity for kind of getting involved in the department's work outside your studies. Uh, as such. So we have a very vibrant uh, Warwick Classics uh, network which works with partners in local schools to really spread the knowledge of classics and ancient history and to give more school children the opportunity to um, experience these. So this means that we can have students, our own undergraduate students going into schools, helping to run things like after school clubs, helping to run Latin or Greek workshops, um, which is excellent if you decide that you want, want to go into education as a career, but it also means that you have the opportunity to sort of put back as well into the community. Um, and we have our annual drama festival, which is almost a highlight of the year, usually in January, although this year it will be delayed due to COVID. Um, but we have a big performance in the Arts Centre and then we have a series of workshops for schools um, to kind of dis discuss the texts as well. And that's something that is run, that the, the players such is actually run by a student classic society in conjunction with the department. Um, so all of the cast and crew are students um, and then we have um, talks from academic members and staff as part of the, uh, the outreach activities. 
And we have an excellent student classics to society. So that isn't part of the department as such, but we work very closely with them. Um, they run our mentoring scheme. So we have a, uh, a lot of support for students as well and a personal kind of pastoral side of things. Um, you would be given a personal tutor and you'd also be assigned two mentors from the Student Classic Society who will help you with any issues you have and, and kind of there to answer any questions you might have. So um, this is the list of our modules. So this is uh, always changing. So some of these may go, some of others may arrive depending on staff members and, and their research interests. But we have um, lots of options from ancient history, classical archaeology, um, and classical archaeology we think of not just as kind of digging, but also as what do you do with this material once you've found it, how do you explore it, how do you analyse it. Um, so, for example, I teach courses on arts and architecture of Asia Minor and domestic space. Uh, my colleagues teach courses on um, coinage. Uh, we have our principles and methods of classical archaeology course. Um, we are also keen to kind of think beyond the traditional sort of Greece and Rome aspects of the ancient Mediterranean. So, for example, a course in the Roman Near East um, and one on ancient global history as well. And then we have a whole range of literature modules, um, things like Greek tragedy, Greek lyric, um, sexuality and gender, thinking about the, the, the physical environment in space and place. It's a whole range of different aspects. Um, so do look at the Taste Lectures because those will give you an idea of some of our um, research uh, interests and modules in a little bit more detail. Um, and then come along to the Q&A session on the 23rd of September. So we've run two sessions, one during the school day and one in the evening for you to ask any questions you've got and just get to know us a little bit as well. Um, and if you can join the, the big university online open days in October, because there we'll have opportunity not only to meet us and some of our students, but also to find out things about accommodation and stuff like that too. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you for listening. Um, do email us with any questions you've got. So there's the general classics account, classics at warwick.ac.uk uh, and our admissions tutor this year is Professor Rymel. So you can also email her directly if you have queries, particularly about, for example, what sort of subjects you might need for the study in Europe degrees or, or anything about that. Um, thank you very much. And I hope to meet you soon. Bye bye. <laughs>